most folks that are alive today, they don't know a time when the U.S. dollar was not the reserve currency of the world. Mm -hmm. This has only been our exorbitant privilege for the last 70 years. And it will not go on indefinitely. And it would, you know, I think the mountain of debt that we're trying to service would suggest that uh, indefinitely is coming pretty soon. The world collectively will revert back to some form of sound money as a, as a starting point. And why wouldn't gold and or silver be a part of that? In the 1990s, he created a billion dollar copper producer. In the 2000s, he launched what would become one of the world's top primary silver producers. And in 2015, he started what he believes will be his third billion dollar company. This is the one gold stock to research right now. Visit crushthestreet.com slash invest right. Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and I'm joined today with Craig Hamke, also known as Turd Ferguson of TFMetalsReport.com. And again, he, he's been on this show before. He's super insightful. His website you know, offers great, insightful updates on precious metals, on the economy, and so much more. He's a great guy to follow. And I personally have a couple things that I, I want to talk to him about. There's a lot of news that have, has come out this week regarding that and what will impact precious metals and I know he'll have some great insight on it. Craig, thanks for joining me. Hey Ken, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Craig, so huge news. Deutsche Bank has agreed to settle US litigation over allegations it illegally conspired with the Bank of Nova Scotia and HSBC to fix silver prices at the expense of investors. I'll start you off with this. How big is this news? It's, it's very big news. Uh, it, it, it's impossible here on uh, April 14th to completely and accurately state just how big. It, it, this could very well be the beginning of the end of the bullion bank fractional derivative uh, pricing scheme that has been foistered upon us now for the last 40 years. There are a number of different aspects of it, Ken, that are, that are really head scratching and, and makes you wonder how this is all coming together. One, why is Deutsche Bank uh, cooperating in the first place uh, as a group? These banks that were named in this suit just as recently as a couple months ago said this was all groundless, you know, all the standard stuff that they've always said and they've always gotten away with, whether it's with the CFTC or any other investigative body. But now all of a sudden they are cooperating. It, it appears that they are being pressured in the by German and European financial regulators such as Baffin to uh, almost in a, in a crackdown in a sense. Everyone knows about the size of Deutsche Bank's derivative book and what a threat it is, not only to the European economy, but the global economy. And it almost is as much as your uh, American regulators and the American Department of Justice have been neutered uh, in terms of pursuing the banks, uh, European regulators such as Baffin are, are taking charge and going full, full, full out after some of these banks. Wow. And so it appears that uh, that's the crux of this, that, that they said, listen, you're gonna you're gonna play ball, okay? This this is coming to an end, and so all of a sudden Deutsche Bank admits basically that's what. Anytime you accept a settlement, uh, you're either admitting your wrongdoing or you're trying to avoid uh, somebody digging further. You know, you're hoping that that's going to be the end of it. Well, the problem is now that you've said you've admit admitted once, now you're you know you're basically opening up the floodgates to all sorts of brand new potential legal cases, civil and criminal. And, and all whatever the different banks that are involved, I mean, every, if they're involved, everyone else is exactly and just the the whole rabbit hole of this. Now, this was just silver. What about what about gold, Craig? They admitted gold too just this morning. That right. was the follow up set of headlines just a couple hours ago. That now Deutsche Bank is admitting to uh, actively participating in the manipulation of price at the London Gold Fix as well. Hmm. And where this ultimately then trickles down is, is two ways. One. They are naming names. They're essentially uh, assuming the role of uh, of the uh, mafia informant who, you know, is either faced with jail time or the opportunity to sing 
uh, and name names and, you know, assume a new identity and move to Idaho, right? Right. Craig, as investors, we know that the markets are supposed to be efficient and these markets aren't efficient, hence price manipulation. Now, this is very much mainstream news here. And I'm wondering if the price manipulation, you know, if the markets are going to start trading more efficiently and cause these metals to go higher as the market recognizes manipulation and it's efficiently priced into the market. Well, if we're going to actually get to an efficient market, we're going to have to get to a physical based market because at least in my opinion, there's nothing efficient about the way the paper derivative uh, pricing scheme on the futures markets work. Not because even in an exposed pricing manipulation uh, scheme? Not necessarily, because as we've seen just this week, as gold and silver have rallied, the banks that act as de, far, de facto market makers on the COMEX have just simply floated uh, additional open interest out to the speculators as a way of controlling speculator demand and thus capping price. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're trading paper derivatives, uh, it doesn't really matter how openly manipulated they are. It's the, because really the only efficient price that we're discovering is the price of the paper derivative. Mm. We're not discovering where people are willing to exchange physical metal at all. That price then is enforced though, by the bullion banks through London, where you still have these daily fixes. And it's that price that, that uh, wholesalers and producers and consumers use around the world. So in the end, this uh, these, these shattering of the London structure and the loss of faith and confidence and the exposure of these bullion banks, what that will do is break apart the London scheme. Mm. And it comes at a rather timely uh, circumstance in that, you know, just next week, finally, we're going to get Shanghai assuming some control with their once daily yuan denominated mm -hmm. gold fix. And so uh, anything that takes the power away from London, the power away from the COMEX, anything uh, like that moves us more toward a physical pricing structure, a more fair pricing structure. And, and if anything, at least we're headed that direction. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to get into next, and that's the Shanghai Gold Exchange and them implementing a yuan-based gold price fixed on April 19th. So is this China moving to be a larger position in a larger position in the precious metals arena? Yes, first and foremost, yes. Uh, I don't know whether it will have a significant impact right away next Tuesday, uh, but I do know that uh, for example, I, I, I've got a friend of mine uh, that a lot of people know of named Andrew McGuire in London. And I've known Andy now for a little over four years. And he has talked about this yuan denominated fix for as long as I've known him and said, boy, when that comes, when that happens, that will be the beginning of the end. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, uh, try to put words in his mouth, but he's always kind of alluded in that direction and waited for this day. Uh, that is finally coming next Tuesday. It is a seizing of power uh, by the East, by the Chinese, and you would expect them to. I think that they are uh, they're deliberately understating how much gold they actually have in their reserves, right? I think we all kind of feel that way, right? How much they mine that never gets exported, all that kind of stuff. He who owns the gold makes the rules and has the power. And I think the Chinese are setting themselves up and have been setting themselves up to offer an alternative to be positioned strongly for the 21st century. If, if you expect, if you understand the true meaning of gold and the power that it has and the power that it holds and has held for millennia, then you want to have some say in the pricing of it, the valuation of it, by setting up a yuan denominated fix that is a uh, seizing of some of that control. And so it is a positive step forward, whether it is something that like changes the market overnight <laughs> Ask me next Wednesday. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Craig, so in the same vein there, we know that they are understating their gold reserves. And I'm curious if you think that it will be in their interest at some point to officially announce what they truly have. And why would they do that? Uh, they would do that as they are. Uh, either revaluing the price or, or, or rolling out, establishing some alternative 
measure of global trade or our alternative vehicle for global trade, whether it's a, uh, a uh, gold-backed currency that they issue or something that they issue in conjunction with other countries, other creditor nations to use amongst themselves as an alternative to the dollar, whether it's going to be the basis of a system of, of gold trade notes to facilitate international trade and a backing so you don't have to take the the risk of a currency you'd facilitate it instead of the dollar, you'd do that in these gold trade notes instead. So it, what they would tra- do is be, it, they would validate gold for what it is by doing that. Because right now it's all about keeping gold under the radar, talking it down, it's not that big of a deal. And then when they do it though, it would be a great validation towards gold, taking the power away from the US and the Western countries. Exactly. And you'd want to have as much as you can when that day comes. In the meantime, uh, there doesn't do the Chinese a lot of good to raise price or see price go significantly higher as they are still converting dollar reserves into gold reserves. They want to accumulate as much as they can, and you can accumulate more at lower prices than you can at higher prices. Mm. You know, there are a lot of folks that think that, that they are behind the manipulation or at least have something to do with it. That wouldn't be unprecedented. We saw for decades, actually. I remember being back in the 1980s when I first started trading commodities. Everybody knew that if the Chinese were going to be in the market for wheat because of a famine, that they'd hit the Chicago Board of Trade and try to sell the crud out of paper wheat for a few weeks and smash the price down before the news hit of of a physical purchase. Mm. So they could very easily be doing the same thing now, or at least uh, contributing to the same thing now in metal. But the day will come that it will benefit them to actually unveil how much gold they actually have. And uh, I don't know if that'll be Tuesday or not, but that day is definitely coming. And, 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 and again, I guess, Ken, this is a hard thing for people to get their arms around because most folks that are alive today, I mean, I'm even talking, you know, the 80 and 90 year olds, they don't know a time when the U.S. dollar was not the reserve currency of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, people think, well, that's just the way it's always been. That's the way it's always going to be. Well, that's not the way it has always been. This has only been our exorbitant privilege for the last 70 years. And it will not go on indefinitely. And it would, you know, I think the mountain of debt that we're trying to service would suggest that uh, indefinitely is coming pretty soon. Yeah. There will be something new. The world collectively will revert back to some form of sound money as a, as a starting point. And why wouldn't gold and or silver be a part of that? So the the smart thing to do is not to try to put all your chips on something happening next week. I think it was uh, uh, it was Art Cash and the guy who used to be at Payne Weber when I was a stockbroker at Payne Weber back 25 years ago. Now they're with UBS. But Art Cash was famous for always saying you don't want to go around predicting the end of the world because you're only going to be right once. (laughs) Uh, You know, I don't want to say that everything's going to change next week, but anticipate is changing anticipation of an eventual revaluation of gold, an actual true price discovery of, of physical gold and silver, not the leverage stuff, but the actual thing. Uh, now is still the time to be accumulating and preparing for that event. And so you just continually add some physical metal to your stack, knowing that that's your best protection against all this, all these events that are to come. Yeah, a good point with all of that. Craig, we know that gold is down at the moment. I, I believe it was down around $21 the last I checked. And I'm wondering if the banks are potentially taking gold down here in anticipation of next week's announcements as just sort of a conditioning of the markets. Oh, it's absolutely a possibility. Uh, we've been tracking this really closely for the, well, obviously, day to day at TF Metals Report. But as soon as it became clear back in February that this rally was really no different from any of the other rallies the last couple of years where the banks are aggressively issuing new paper contracts and selling them to the specs to soak up their demand and aggressively naked shorting as they do it, uh, well, that's that's what these banks do. That's what they've always done. And so we've gotten uh, in March on three separate occasions, the total open interest on the COMEX has exceeded 500,000 contracts, gotten close to 510. Now, mind you, this is up from 380,000 contracts at the end of January. Okay. So these banks have created 13 million ounces of paper obligations for gold uh, since the end of January. right? Right. They didn't have to put up any gold to do that. They just simply created these derivatives from whole cloth and sold them to the specs in the hopes that eventually spec demand runs out 
you know, everybody that's going to buy will have bought. Then they can kind of tip the thing over. They can do what they did quite obviously today. They ran a scheme to break the 50-day moving average, hoping that all these speculators that trade off a computer were all ahead of the excess at once. You get an avalanche of price going down. <laughs> and into all of that selling by the specs, these very same banks take the other side of the trade. They're buying, buying back their shorts, covering up and closing back out the open interest. It's the game they've played quite literally for decades. Uh, and they're playing it again now. At the moment, again, we got up uh, just as of, let's see, two days ago, we crossed the 500,000 threshold again in open interest. The last time we did it back in March, we were hit for $24 the very next day. So the fact that we were hit again overnight and again today comes as no surprise. And the folks that are out there trying to trade gold and silver for that matter, as if, you know, there's really some rationale uh, and they're really a free, fair market. I, they're kidding themselves. The banks are still in control. They're trying to enforce their will on these markets. It's it's a profitable venture for them. And and, uh, and we just got to keep fighting them. We hope that this news that we received today, though, is maybe a more significant cut uh, to them. You know, it's like... Uh, when uh, Rocky finally landed a pretty good punch on Drago, you know, and, and Drago started to bleed. Wait a second. He really is just a man. He and a man can be knocked out. Um, this is today's action. The today's news is a cut to Drago. And so hopefully now we can work the body a few times and, and knock him out. <laughs> Craig, I wanted to ask you, what are there any key price points here for gold that you see as significant in terms of us breaking through or um, going under for predictions about the future? I'll give you two to watch. Uh, one on the downside for gold, but the upside in silver, because uh, silver is performing very well today, given how aggressively they've come after gold. And the fact that gold is down so much more on a percentage basis than silver should tell you something about the banker intent to get gold prices back down and shake out the open interest and cover some of their shorts. Uh, you want to watch that 50-day moving average because for now that that key technical indicator and think of all these speculator high frequency uh, trading uh, speculator hedge funds and the like that look at these technical indicators in gold the 50-day is rising rapidly it is bullishly crossed and is rising above the 100-day the 100-day is bullishly crossed and is rising above the 200-day i couldn't get a more tech bullish technical configuration and so the first key for the banks is to break price back down through the 50-day which as we speak they've done uh, that's the main thing you want to watch. That thing's about 1232. If price could reverse on Friday and end the week back above 1232, uh, that would be a good sign. Close the week below 1232. They're going to try to explore more downside, take out the most recent lows down near 1210 and really target the 1190 level, which was the previous high for gold in the rally back in October. So if you really want to tip this thing over and create some some downside momentum. Once you break the 50 day, you go for that. And then the 100 and 200 days, which are down near 1140. Mm -hmm. Opposite though, silver is, is very interesting in that we watched it come down and trade with what appeared to be almost a physical floor for the better part, about a year and a half, late 2014, all the way through 2015. It put on the chart about the most beautiful, symmetrical, rounded bottom near $14 for 90 days from the beginning of November to the end of January this year. It broke out from 1460, went to 16, and then came back and tested support at 1460. I think, in fact, the low was 1461 in the middle of February, late February. Mm. It since moved to a higher high up to 1620, came back to 1480, and now it moved to a higher high again yesterday, getting up to 1635. Where gold has made higher highs versus uh, where it got to in 2015. I mentioned 1190 in October. It got to 1230 in May. And gold took out both of those and made a higher high here recently getting to 1280. Silver in its recovery has yet to make a higher high. It hasn't gotten past the 1638 level that it saw on October 28th of last year. So if silver 
were to continue to hang on here, if uh, these headlines give it some impetus and you know things begin to unravel a little bit, if silver can exceed 1638, they're probably gonna set off some buy stops of some long held shorts and it'll begin to accelerate probably well into the 17s. And if it were ever to get back above 1820, or maybe we should say when it finally gets back above 1820, which was kind of a reactionary bottom and low from 2013 that held as a floor for a long time. Once it's back above 18 and 1820, it's gonna be pretty clear to everybody that the battleship is turned, that the lows are in, and we can start moving up rather quickly. So let's watch 1638 first, something in about 1750 after that, and then as we move into the summer, let's hope we can put on an 18 plus handle and then we'll really begin to see things get cooking. Hey, well, let the games begin, man. I, I've been looking forward to seeing this rally for uh, a long time now. 2016 has been uh, very exciting. I know you alluded to it being just like some of the older rallies that we have seen Um but, you know, we have seen 52-week highs, though, you know, and we haven't seen that in the past. The trends yep. have been a little stronger. But you know what? You bring the case up. We didn't even talk about the high-frequency trading, you know, the, the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, you know, algorithms and all of that stuff today. And we know how important those are. And you've, you've clearly laid that out in some of our previous interviews and, of course, on your website. Um, so, Craig... Any last thoughts here before we say goodbye? And just, uh, of course, let everyone know what they will find if they visit you at tfmetalsreport.com. I would say well, the other piece of the puzzle is, is everyone's got to be att paying attention to what the miners are telling you as well. Uh, the fact that the HUI index has more than doubled in about 90 days, that's something we did not see during the rallies of 2014 and 15. The miners just kept going down, 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 down. And so sometimes you got to take a step back. It's easy to be caught up in the moment of all of this and, and live day by day. And you're almost like the frog in a pot. You know, you don't notice the temperature getting turned higher. <laughs> I, I'd invite everybody to kind of, is this different? As you, as you try to assess if, if we start a new bull market or if we're onto something new and and really charging forward you know put yourself back in your shoes back on january the first you know at the end of another brutal year gold's down at 1060 the miners the hui index is 105 silver's at 14 and if uh you could fast forward to today 100 days later into a conversation that you and i are having about gold being 20 percent higher you know the hui index being 100 percent higher yeah i think you'd probably sit back on new year's eve and go holy cow i wonder what the heck's going on in april right um, this is pretty significant what's been going on. And I think uh, it should con continue to make 2016 a year of consequence. Um, yeah, and in terms of the site, I think we do, a, I'm not really very good at patting myself on the back, but I think we do an extraordinarily good job, Excellent job. of, of expect, anticipating and predicting short-term moves in the metals based upon this knowledge that the banks are in control and they are the ones that are in there trying to to affect change on a daily basis so we talk about that at tf metals report every day we do podcasts every day uh trying to spread the word as much as we can it's it's a whopping 11.95 a month so it's not like we you know we charge through the nose for this information uh but we want to enlighten as many folks we can to try to keep the price as low as possible i encourage everybody to check it out uh, tfmetalsreport.com craig we from all of us here at crushthestreet.com we really thank you for coming on the show today and sharing your knowledge exposing the system exposing the scam and you know what i look forward to seeing this all unravel and just see what happens with the banks here with deutsche bank and the news about the shanghai gold exchange lots of things taking place and i couldn't have put it better myself looking at today uh, in hindsight from January 1st or looking forward from January 1st if we would have seen what has happened over the last hundred days you know that would have been a spectacular uh, move and it is a spectacular move so lots of exciting things uh, thanks again for coming on the show Ken it's always a pleasure call anytime